This podcast will be on the topic of the Cold War. I will give a simple overview of the basic facts, go over some of the events that occurred, and look at how it affected America. I chose this subject because it's a historical event like no other the world has ever seen. After World War II ended in 1945, Western Europe was left in the ruins. Therefore, the Soviet Union and the United States of America emerged as the world's only superpowers. They had profoundly different views on government and economics. The United States were capitalists, which is an economic system based on private ownership. The Soviets were communists. They based their governing on Marx and Lenin's ideas. Their goal was to abolish social classes, private ownership, and the state. Both of these superpowers wanted to spread their influence throughout the world. This, in addition to mutual distrust and enmity, is why the Cold War began. As the name suggests, this war was not fought directly. Instead, it was fought through proxy wars, propaganda, and intimidation. Proxy wars are wars that take place in other countries, but were still supported by one of the superpowers, either with military power or financial aid. Examples include the Vietnam War, the Korean War, and the Afghanistan War. It's disputed when the Cold War officially began, but most historians believe that it started during the beginning of the Berlin occupation in 1947. At this time, Berlin was divided into Soviet-occupied East, while West Berlin was occupied by France, Britain, and America. The leader of the Soviet Union, Joseph Stalin, wanted to have total control over Berlin, and he thought that the Western alliance would just let him have it. This, however, was not the case. Even when they set up a blockade to prevent supplies from reaching West Berlin, they did not cave in. Instead, they dropped the supplies by air. The United States and Soviet felt threatened by each other, and the relationship between them got worse and worse. Stalin would go on to claim the countries by Russia's border to strengthen Russia's defense, and he established communist regimes within them. Winston Churchill said, an iron curtain has descended across Europe. After seeing the spread of Soviet communism, the United States President Harry Truman created the Truman Doctrine with intent to contain the spread of communism. It funded regimes that were under threat by Soviet, like Tur Turkey and Greece. NATO was formed in 1949, also with the intent to deal with communism, in addition to strengthening the bond between the Western alliance. NATO reformed itself after the Cold War to deal with new threats and are still active today. In response to NATO, Soviet and their respective allies created a rival alliance called the Warsaw Pact in 1955. The pact was disbanded when the Soviet Union collapsed in 1991. A nuclear arms race took place between the two nations. The United States had already utilized their nukes in the war against Japan, and their effectiveness was eminent. The Soviets had also begun developing warheads, and tested their first in 1949. After this, both started frantically developing nuclear weapons and military technology. The thought was that a large arsenal would deter the enemy from attacking. If one of the nations were to attack, mutual destruction would be assured. The Cuban Missile Crisis was a 13-day conflict that almost resulted in total nuclear war because the Soviets had placed nuclear missiles in Cuba that could be launched quickly and strike before the United States could manage to react. For a moment, nuclear war seemed inevitable. After, however, after intense negotiations between the two superpowers, they came to an agreement. The Soviets would withdraw their missiles from Cuba and the United States would withdraw their missiles placed in Turkey and Italy. A direct hotline was also created between the United States and the Soviet Union to improve communications in the future. During the 1950s, there was a common fear for communist infiltration and espionage in the US. This is popularly known as the Red Scare or McCarthyism. It got its name after its most famous supporter, 
Senator Joseph McCarthy. In this period, many people were falsely, falsely accused of being communists. The United States used propaganda to create fear of communism. They used platforms like movies, newspapers, and radio to paint a picture of communists as evil and destructive. This was a period of intense fear and, uncer and uncertainty in the US, and some of the attitudes present during the Red Scare are still ingrained in America today. The space race was a result of the nuclear arms race. Both nations wanted to boast their technological capabilities by spaceflight. The Soviets sent their first satellite into orbit. They called it the Sputnik. They also sent the first human into space. However, the space race peaked in 1969 when the, the United States sent the first manned mission to the moon with the spaceship Apollo 11. This was a huge win in the ideological warfare against Soviet. Both of the nations had strong incentives to achieve spaceflight, and the space race led to some incredible technological innovations. To conclude, the Cold War has in many ways shaped the world we live in today, and we can see both negative and positive consequences of this. Perhaps the largest change was the shift in perspective. During the Cold War, we, re we realized that we had the potential to destroy each other, and that the greatest threat to humans are ourselves. The United States economy was considerably drained after the Cold War. Relentless tension and military escalations had definitely taken its toll on America. In addition, the occupation and proxy wars fought in other countries, like Afghanistan, had created insurgents who were hostile towards the United States. Among them were a group called Al-Qaeda, who would go on to commit the terrorist act on the World Trade Center in 2001, which claimed the lives of 3,000 people. In the end, I guess you could say that the United States won the Cold War, but at what cost?